Hi guys, before I start commenting on the video of a recent debate, I want to quickly take you to a really scary place, reality. Reality is a place where you can't bullshit, at least not for long, and where lies are shown to be lies and where data and facts reign supreme. You simply can't beat reality even though many still try. And then walk the walk of shame, their tails tucked between the legs. A mere 30 odd whatever years ago, a Muslim in South Africa, Ahmed Dida, invented a new art form, a new way to con people, Dawa acting for video. He realized the power of video, acting for camera, and used it to his advantage to get non-Muslims to believe Islam is great and Muslims to donate their money. He taught Sakya Naik the same tricks of the trade, who went on to scam millions of his followers. And by the way, is now hiding in Malaysia because nobody wants to come back in his violent rhetoric. Many years later, just a short time after I got interested in Islam, I was watching a guy called Hamza Tsortsis enter the scene with a fresh take on this Dawa acting job. Now, initially, I was hopeful that he could change the perception of Islam, but sadly, he went into the what, well, Salafi direction and started preaching more fundamentalist versions of Islam. He was in over his head, and I watched in fascination how, after many years in his Dawa acting job, he was finally confronted with reality, and he was skillfully demolished by Professor Pervez Hoodboy, and then sent packing and into retirement by the superior brain of Professor Lawrence Krauss. He had to abandon his job of professional Muslim troll and today goes to work, still a professional Muslim, in the UK, where I'm not even convinced that he is a real Muslim. And he's, it could be that he's just acting this too in order to not lose his job with, with our era, since he seems to fail at everything else. Now, his style and basic approach is today copied by someone calling themselves Muhammad Hijab. He also takes gullible people for a ride, pretends there is substance, throws around names and words he can't understand himself, and simply makes his appearance an act. Nothing new. But in his case, I think he actually is a Muslim. Now, why I'm telling you all this is because I see so many parallels, and it could well be that hijab has been confronted with reality too, finally, which, you know, his, his spiel was badly cut up um, by the mind of Eddie Tabash in the US and was now so totally demolished by the duo in the debate in Oxford that it could be that hijab has lost his appeal and people are starting to realize there's nothing there and are now turning away. Now, Tzortz has realized that at the time, and is there a further damaging Islam, walked away. Will hijab accept reality and do the same? What I noticed is that hijab is starting to make mistakes, careless mistakes, stupid mistakes, uh, small mistakes. I have some big ones as well, but um, he didn't usually do this. So it, it seems that he's a little bit um, off his, his usual game. And I'll showcase this later, just to have an example of what I'm talking about. And he's, I think he's running out of ideas and arguments that appeal to his followers. But let's see what hijab does when reality hits him. Allah knows best, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let me turn to the original task that I set for myself, the commenting of a video. And this is a debate between Alex O'Connor, better known as Cosmic Skeptic, in a team with ex-psychologist Dr. Colin Brewer. And on the other side, this Muhammad Hijab from Speaker's Corner I just talked about, and his fellow Muslim calling himself Abdullah al-Andalusi both Islamic apologists. And this was organized by the Oxford Forum in London, 6th of May, 2019. And the debate topic was an assertion. Islam explains reality better than atheism. No, sorry, it was a question. Does Islam explain reality better than atheism? Or maybe not, or maybe both. I don't know why the Muslims putting up this stuff can't even agree on the title of the topic of the debate. And I'm sorry, but this chaotic attitude can be seen right through the debate. Now, what I'm doing is simply commenting as I watch the video of the debate. So at times the statements are later clarified or not. It doesn't, I, I never know this. And I, then if they do, then I will point this out accordingly. Now, technically, the title or topic of this so-called debate, whatever version you take, is nonsensical. 
And man, do I hate the word atheism. Because not believing something can't ever be an ism. And you need to be incredibly charitable towards those who believe gods exist for some wild and wonderful reason. To accept these terms, atheist and atheism. Now, I'm not, so I don't. Because I see no point in having these two words in the language. But, okay. I'll play along here for argument's sake under the provision that we agree that the term atheism, and you can hear the air quotes here, I hope, (laughs) does only one thing. It describes a human being who does not believe gods exist. Full stop. Nothing else. So, no, atheism can't describe reality when it only describes a human being without a god belief. So, technically, yes, Islam, the ideology, by default, describes reality better. By default. Even if everything describing anything in reality in the Quran itself is wrong. But based on this, both parties could actually read the topic, read it out loud, agree and go home. They could have debated something more useful, namely how people with or without a God belief describe reality. And here we have vast differences, but they don't. And I suppose you'll see why shortly. And sadly, just by the by, the video is not available for all viewers as access to present it on their respective platforms was made impossible for the non-Muslims, contradicting the initial insurance that they would be able to present the debate footage on their channel, which would allow for free commenting without the tight censorship we have on the Muslim apologist channel like Salam and Hijabs. Oh, it's a pity. Now you see my comment, and when I log out, now you don't. It's dishonest, but nothing new. Okay, there was no animal sacrifice, no singing or appealing to any gods, so Andalusi gets right to it. This guy, Andalusi, is someone I've bumped into for many years now, and he's highly unimpressive, usually parroting some tired old arguments he probably got from Christian apologists, I don't know what. They're all long refuted and quite boring, and he does not disappoint, delivering a lackluster performance and making the common mistake of telling atheists what they believe. Come on, this always fails, and there's no, it's no different here. I have tried explaining this to him when he was on the gin and tonic show, and he simply can't grasp the concept of atheist, a person without a God belief, and with no other claims, beliefs or information attached to that term. No, Mr. Andaluzi, an atheist does not believe gods exist, and thus does not call the universe a god, and does not consider this to be a volcano either. Oh boy, will this never end? His contribution to the entire debate was that he preaches, praising his creator God without actually showing how Islam represents reality and how it does so better than an approach without a God belief. Instead, he just rattles off, you know, like tired old arguments for the existence of his God, like infinite regress, first mover, teleology, fine tuning. It's just making claims, nothing else. And does he in any way explain any of the reality claims in Islamic texts, like talking ants or flying donkeys? Not a chance. So all he does is he brings refuted arguments for the existence of his God. Hmm. Then, well, then Alex, a cosmic skeptic, takes his term and instead of going into his prepared opening statements, he saves time and immediately addresses the misrepresentations I've just mentioned, correcting Andalusi, ever the educator, I guess. He, well, quite eloquently demonstrates how we humans must say we don't know to a vast array of questions that if we are honest, that is if ethics is something we value, if we want to be authentic. And he points out quite rightly that all that Andalusi has done is make unfounded claims. He patiently explains what the word nothing actually refers to, and even says there is no reason to believe that things can't come out of nothing. Um, There's no good reason to think that something can't come out of nothing. Next, he demonstrates that if someone does not agree with the doctrine, the, the Quran, This entails a disagreement with Islam itself, and thus an inability to explain reality. 
because you can't use the Quran, so you can't use um, Islam if there is anything, even one small thing that you don't agree with. And he quotes a sentence from the Quran, which puts men in charge of women, allows them after some criteria have been fulfilled to beat their wives. He backs this up with a quote from the secondary text in Islam, describing a version of reality of male dominance and domestic violence. And this will never be addressed by the two Muslims. Now, sadly, he does not talk about how living without you know, being constrained by gods provides a person with much more capabilities to examine and understand reality. You know, critically, without the common God did it, suffocation that eliminates any critical thinking or objective scrutiny of the real world if you are a Muslim. Next up, hijab takes the stand demonstrating that clothes can be way too small without limiting the acting ability. He says he's come there to refute something. Interesting. He should actually do the opposite. He should show how Islam explains reality. Positive, not negative. But I suppose he can't do that. Now, Alex, Alex has just a few seconds earlier described and explained the concept of the word nothing. And hijab makes a total fool of himself by using the word in the wrong way that was just explained that is wrong and why it is wrong. This is astonishing. The problem with most Islamic apologists is their built-in rhetoric towards Christians. But talking to an atheist is very different and not so easy. And that's one of the reasons I guess they constantly fail again and again. So... Well, they, they, they try using Christianity, addressing Christianity. I don't know why. And instead of addressing the arguments, he jobbed now after 25 minutes, he attacks the person, the classic ad hominem, claiming that Alex in the past has said something different than he said a few minutes earlier. And he quotes a video he appeared in two years ago. And he says, Well, uh, I made a little list. Examples of things that have been created out of nothing, that's what that means. Um, firstly, of course, we have the universe. When the universe came into existence, it truly did come into existence out of nothing. Okay, and what Hijab fails to understand is that we have several possibilities here, where the context was different, where Alex misspoke, or where he simply has updated his findings. Hijab tries to create a gotcha moment here, trying to make Alex look bad. But does this in any way change the way that Islam describes reality? No. Does it show that Alex might have contradicted himself here? No. It's an assertion without evidence. Now, an honest person would ask Alex and get an explanation from him. But for hijab, this is a cheap shot. <laughs> and he milks it. Hijab is obsessed with delivering a show for his fans who will not question anything or realize he is actually making a gigantic fool of himself here. But the cosmic skeptic did not contradict himself. He clearly states, as we've just heard, that there is no reason to build a model based on the universe arising out of nothing. So you can do that. But it seems that hijab, in his obsession to create a gotcha, got it wrong and does what he does so well so often, misunderstand what was being said. And it, it shows his severe lack of comprehension skills I've demonstrated so many times and which he tries to cover up by blatantly spewing out complete nonsense, but <clears throat> in an arrogant style. And this is what his fanboys mistake for substance. They don't think or question, but applaud. And he misrepresents Alex, saying that he's claiming he is not making hard claims, and then he does make hard claims. Okay, how does he get that right? And this is... Okay, let, let me try and unravel this a bit, because this is a misrepresentation, okay, and quite a primitive one at that. It exemplifies a huge problem in these kind of debates, where a very short, dishonest and false claim can take a very long time to be comprehensively refuted. And Alex explained in great detail what his definition of atheist is and said he is not making any knowledge claims regarding gods and only regarding gods. The problem, however, stems from Muslim apologists being unable to process this information, constantly saying things like atheist professor, atheist biologist, atheist scientist, and so on and on and on. This is nonsensical. 
and also quite counterproductive, as here our poor hijab shows he can't process that a knowledge claim regarding cosmology cannot be compared to what a knowledge claim looks like in theology. Number one. Okay, let me just explain this, okay? Dear Muslim apologist, it's, it's about language, okay, and the application of words. Now, if I use the word like flat, the object I describe can vary. So whether I'm talking about coke being flat, or living in a flat, or a flat-chested woman, a flat tire, or a flat desert, the intended meaning of the word flat is very different depending on what it is related to. Now, the same does not apply to the word atheist, which has only one single, and I really mean one item attached to it, the not having a belief regarding gods. You can't use the word for anything else. Well, if you are sincere, that is. So the word is always related to belief and the belief regarding gods, not knowledge. There's no knowledge claim attached here. Now, having said this, it does not stop a person, and it doesn't matter who it is, from saying we are covering, let's say, one kilometer in 30 seconds, a knowledge claim. Now, anyone can say this when traveling 120 kilometers an hour. So the atheist saying this is still an atheist because traveling at 120 does not change a belief regarding gods. It's quite simple, <laughs> yet still too much for the brain of our Muhammad hijab. And he's obsessed and full of hatred towards those who don't believe what he does. And that seems to block his mind. And sadly, this acting too goes awry when he tries to launch into this, this childish, necessary versus dependent argument. I've, I, I took it apart in the last video covering a debate he was in. And then, and this is actually quite bad. I, I don't know if he has blackouts or something because we get nonsensical word salad like the multiverse has a propensity of being any other. What? Well, a multiverse has the propensity of being any other way. Really? He just now demonstrates once again his lack of understanding a philosophical approach to a scientific topic, where he can't see that using the concept of a, I don't know, a thought experiment a la, a la Boltzmann, any universe can have any property, endlessly, where we exist in spite of unlikely and even seemingly impossible conditions, like the low entropy condition in our universe, as humans with a body. Instead, he simply redefines the word necessary as being God. But this in no way helps describe reality. It's, it's just an excuse to stop thinking and to resort to claiming magic is responsible, namely God. And this is followed by shouting some nonsensical stuff, incoherent and absurd, with the acceptance of, and, and this is crazy, the acceptance of the existence of a universe makes one a theist because you are accepting that something is necessary. How exactly does this explain reality? All hijab is doing is trying just to undermine the credibility of those who don't believe what he believes. That's all, nothing else. And next he, he just simply preaches, claiming there's a definition of the Islamic God which is false, there is no definition of a god. And again, conflating his favorite god and ignorance. As soon as you don't know something, oh, you must be a Muslim. Really? Sorry, I mean, this is not a debate, but it's a, it's a cross between childish whining and the display of a willfully ignorant adult. It's pitiful. Islam as an ideology can't explain anything and no more than atheism, in air quotes, can. So we see at the end of the day that Islam as an ideology even here fails because it can't really explain reality at all. It tries to, but fails. So Hijab continues venting his anger, shouting and waving his arms wildly, but not making any points or providing any information regarding Islam and how it tries to describe reality. And in his desperation, he embarks on the long refuted claim that the Quran contains a falsification test, hoping that someone without knowledge of the Quran itself will simply believe it. And after 29 minutes, he now does what I mentioned in the intro. He makes a stupid mistake, really, and it's, it's stupid. 
He talks about Andalusi's opening statement and he makes this amazing claim. We never use the word cause. Well, Andalusi uses create, creator, initiator, first mover, shaper and, and other synonyms. But, okay, let's see. Is he job with his claim? No matter how insignificant this may be, is he telling the truth for once? No, of course not. A cause can cause, cause. So even here he is wrong. And that is even substantiated by Andalusi himself. So I just said ultimately there will be a cause. I don't know. So Hijab just goes back to his favorite delusion, the claim what he calls a necessity, the one I have already debunked and ridiculed, and he simply resorts to preaching. And he lists nonsensical claims since he has no arguments or facts. What is a bit alarming to me is when, you know, in his rage, he drops his mask of smiling benevolence and exposes the true nature of his character, where, in this case, gender equality is not a given, and women can be treated differently with different rights and can rightfully be put in bags. That is frightening to me. This alone shows why Islam in this form does not fit into the 21st century. All hijab manages is to attack statements Alex made in previous videos, not what he said at the debate itself. He takes snippets, the classical quote mining, and then claims these are wrong or nonsensical without bothering to explain why, and expects Alex to be able to explain this short part of a sentence he said years ago. This is what I call total intellectual bankruptcy. Now, after 35 minutes, Dr. Colin Brewer, a psychologist, takes the microphone and describes the general problems theistic ideologies have in describing reality. He makes the point that Islam is now different to what Christianity did to atheists and how this is still true for Islam today. Colin makes an excellent point, stating that reality can't be accurately described if you censor all opinions except your own, which is what Islam is doing. I mean, we've shown that many OIC member states apply strict censorship when accessing the internet, especially when it comes to human evolution, Islamic slavery, women's rights and these kind of topics. And he quite rightly questions and doubts the certainty claims both Muslims have made so far. Now, he's not so much, you know, into uh, Islam, so there's not really a lot that he can contribute here. But the points that he makes, they're, they're quite solid. And then after 47 minutes, we get to the rebuttals. And Andalusi now starts explaining himself, where he says atheists don't have a belief, where he said previously that the universe was a god to atheists. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but as long as he corrects himself, I guess it's okay. But he, he can't help himself. He must go and talk himself into a mess. Just to kind of uh, reframe this discussion in terms of what I mean by atheism, or why I mentioned the term atheism. It carries a necessary corollary. If you don't believe in God's existence, that means that your worldview does not require you to posit God to explain things. He wants to what? Refrain? From what? An atheist has nothing, nada, zil, zero, nothing attached. Only non-belief regarding God. An atheist cannot and does not explain anything. It's only not believing the claims made by theists that gods exist. That's it. An atheist can have all sorts of wild and wonderful beliefs regarding other sectors, other areas, other whatever. But when will these pinheads grasp this? Why is this impossible to process? And in, instead of educating Andalusi, Hijab just nods. He should say, no, wait, hang on, we've, we've just been, we've just heard that this is wrong. No, he doesn't. And it's quite frustrating to listen to Andalusi digging himself deeper and deeper, and Hijab does not help. He joins in, making it worse, demonstrating he has no grasp of, of things like infinity and how we can manage infinity in mathematics. I'm not, I'm not talking about the physical world, but about mathematics. And... Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not being facetious here, but Hijab has the brain of a child, really. In, in his mind, there's this God and this is everything. If you point out logical constraints, impossibilities, anything else, he just looks at you with big eyes and mumbles, but this is God, which does nothing to explain all the illogical claims surrounding his 
God understanding thingy. It gets embarrassing when, you know, when hijab takes a situation where in the past Alex was explaining a hypothetical situation and hijab can't fathom this and insists he said those words without understanding that those words were being used in building a model, not making a statement or claim. It's really primitive quote mining. Like if I were to say, Muslims believe that the God of Islam exists without a doubt. Okay, now somebody cuts off the first three words and then they can say they heard me admit that the God of Islam exists without a doubt. It's <laughs> basically dishonest. And Alex explained this and hijab still manages to clothe. Unbelievable what Islam can do to a brain. After an hour five minutes, Andalusi is seen whistling in the woods, claiming that atheists make the same claims as all other groups, when he's just been seen to be without any compelling arguments and can only make claims and assert his favorite deity exists. He's helpless. He doesn't address anything that atheists make. There's not a, a single claim. There's not a single argument. He's just helpless, as, as is hijab, by the way, and all other Islamic apologists I've ever come across. They can't go up against reality, no matter how loud they cry, plead, and complain. And this Andalusi guy, come on, all he has is lies and deceit. And he knows perfectly well this is a lie, where he claims that not believing gods, yeah, okay, not believing gods exist, is in itself an ideology and a form of liberalism. And this is rubbish, squared. What is mildly interesting is that when hijab is put on the spot and asked to explain moral objectivism, he starts waffling and hand-waving. And again, he can't understand how a person can be tolerant and not tolerate intended suffering at the same time. How can a God do that? So he can't get something like a concept into his head where morality is human-made and he is actually better than his God. Huh. Well, all hijab has is because God said so, as though this is an argument. And where does his God say this? Well, in the Quran. So without demonstrating the existence of a God, hijab claims his God exists because God said so in the Quran, because the Quran says so. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, this is a highly frustrating affair, really. I mean, the two Muslims are simply making claims I find utterly childish and then apply special pleading. There is nothing of substance here, just the usual presuppositionist attitude and stubborn denial of reality. What is symptomatic is when Hijab makes another one of those quite silly mistakes I mentioned in the beginning where he claims the title of a book in a, in a book is, is X, okay? Now, Alex corrects him and even says, yeah, a lot of people think so, but this is wrong. It, it's actually not there. And hijab goes all in, claiming he is sure and we need to check this and blah, da, 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 da. Well, here we go. John Stuart Mill wrote the book himself. You can get the copy from Waterstones now. Everyone in the that audience can good. Google it. Yes, it's actually, the, the title is Proof of utilitarian chapter that's, four. That's what people call it. That's not what Mill wrote. Mill, oh, who, who calls it that? The title, Mill. Mill call, the, the, no, Mill what are you saying? Mill doesn't call it the proof of utilitarianism. That's what it's titled. He avoids it. He does not that's say That's the name that. of the chapter, my it's friend. It's not the name of the chapter. Okay, so should we get it up? Yeah, if you'd like to. Well, when we do check, what do we find? Hijab is wrong, as it usually is when the topic is philosophy or science. And his fans will probably claim the book, published in, what, 1863, was forged and hijab is right. But does hijab in any way apologize? Nah. And then when Colin wanted an answer to his question, how anybody could possibly know whether anything claimed about the origins of the Quran is true, he only got some, some waffling and hand-waving, but not an answer. And... This actually sums up the entire debate, where the two Muslims made a lot of claims they could not substantiate, and when asked a question, had no answer. Okay, that brings us to 1 hour 20, to audience questions. And the first question was about theory of evolution, and Andalusi made the usual mess, saying he does not deny evolution while denying evolution. <laughs> the non-believer side was not allowed to respond for some reason. 
I, I don't, it doesn't really matter. I don't know why we still discuss this. The second question was a how question. How can Muslims show that Christianity is wrong about Jesus? And Hijab answered this. Instead of answering, he simply reiterates his presuppositionist claims regarding his favorite creator, God. He claims there is no prophecy in the Quran that is false. But this was about Jesus, whether it is correct. He's saying there is no prophecy that is false. Now, I'm 100% sure he would never make such a claim with me because he knows that I know there is no prophecy in the Quran. But the disturbing thing here is that what is happening is quite common. The burden of proof is reversed. He's making the claim something is true and then asks me or whoever he's talking to to show it is false, where the burden is actually on him to demonstrate his claim is correct, which he can never do. And we need to watch out for this trick because it's so often applied. But because this is a sly customer okay, who, who uses tricks to appear in control of the situation and you know, ooze confidence that he's right, even if he's quite pathetic and completely wrong. And Simon picks this up and quite rightly points out that Hijab's answer was just a set of unverifiable claims. And then Andalusi wraps it up with yet another nonsensical claim. That the idea of an infinite thing which has will, that can initiate by choice, is the only possible ultimate explanation for all things that avoids contradiction. Okay, this sort of sums up the entire positions of the Muslims and their claims. A basket full of red herrings, strawmen and complete nonsense. Islam does not describe reality and not correctly either. And atheism doesn't have to. Personally, I would have expected a short list of claims made in the Quran regarding reality and demanded an explanation for this explanation. And then take the same list and demonstrate how unconstrained critical thinking can tackle the same claims and come to a very different, a real description that is correct, accurate, and most of all, testable, verifiable, falsifiable. And this debate shows quite vividly how a God belief dumbs you down and prevents you from making a coherent, compelling argument when confronted with reality. Thanks for your time. See you next time.